Now, many Gentiles just assume that Hanukkah is our way of competing with Christmas. I promise you, it's not. Hanukkah is one of the best documented ancient celebrations within Judaism. Chag Sameach. It means happy holiday. And I want all of you to enjoy a very joyous and enlightened Hanukkah. My name is Randy Weiss. I'm a Jewish guy who believes in Jesus, the light of the world. And I want all of you to catch the flavor of how Jewish families celebrate Hanukkah, our festival of lights. Literally, Hanukkah means dedication. Jewish children light candles on each of the eight nights of, the, of Hanukkah, calling to remembrance the rededication of our ancient temple after it was desecrated by pagan invaders. During this festival, children play a special dreidel game to commemorate the legend of the miracle of the Hanukkah story. The dreidel carries a letter on each of the four sides as an acronym for the famous declaration about our holiday. The letters are Nun, Gimel, He, Shin, and they stand for the words Nes Gadol Haya Sham, meaning a great miracle happened there. As within most of our traditions, they're passed down Lador Vador from generation to generation. And we teach our children the tale that we only had enough sanctified olive oil to burn in the temple lampstand for one night. And the great miracle celebrated is that one day, a supply of oil, a one day supply of oil lasted eight days, allowing for the purification of the temple after the wicked pagan ruler from Syria sacrificed a pig on the altar of God. But it is still an important festival for both Jews and Christians. In case you're unfamiliar with the details, Hanukkah is the story of a small band of Jewish freedom fighters who successfully drove out a vastly superior army of foreign oppressors. The annual celebration retells the story for ongoing generations of Jews to remember. Now, many Gentiles just assume that Hanukkah is our way of competing with Christmas. I promise you it's not. Hanukkah is one of the best documented ancient celebrations within Judaism. And this story of the rededication of the temple is recorded in both the first and second books of Maccabees within the Apocrypha. It's also attested to by Josephus and Megillat Antiochus, the scroll of Antiochus. Hanukkah is one of the most celebrated festivals on the Jewish calendar. I mean, many Jewish families would never think of failing to dig out their menorah and light their daily dose of festival candles to remember the miracle of the oil. Now, don't hate me, but I must tell you an unfortunate truth. The miracle of the oil is actually less credible than Santa Claus. It never happened. The plain truth is that if you're looking in the Jewish scriptures for the famous eight-day miracle of the Hanukkah lights, you'd have a better chance of citing Elvis because not one single reference exists in the Jewish Bible for either of them. Hanukkah is simply not to be found in any Jewish Bible. Now, as I want you to know, that's not a shocker. You see, the events surrounding the first Hanukkah did not take place until several hundred years after the last book of the Hebrew Bible was written. Our Bible was finished before Hanukkah happened. Therefore, the Hebrew Bible is silent about Hanukkah because the canon of Jewish scripture was already closed. But what about the miracle of the oil? I mean, that is clearly the focus of the celebration today. And the lack of any literary or historical evidence, it's just a fact that somebody should discuss. And that's why I'm here. Many hundreds of years elapsed after the first Hanukkah before anyone talked about the alleged miracle. Now, I realize that the Maccabees didn't have CNN coverage, but I promise you that the miracle would have been in their press kit if they could have attached it with their resume. Like it or not, no reference to the miracle exists in any of the ancient Hanukkah literature or anywhere else. The Bible is silent about the story. Ancient historians, I mean, even prolific Jewish historians like Philo and Josephus made no mention of the alleged miracle. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a solid consensus of historical sources about the Maccabean revolt and their stunning victory. The literature of the era is clear about a rededication of the temple. 
even an eight-day celebration is documented to honor our God and His redemptive work in the temple. But no one bothered to mention the oil miracle for nearly 400 years. Seriously, folks, call 911. I'm declaring a Hanukkah emergency. There was no oil miracle. So, what do you think? Did the temple oil get anointed by the ever-ready bunny to outlast the competition? I don't think so. Or the Easter bunny wouldn't be getting all the really good gigs. Look, I'm not into warm fuzzies and a touchy-feely kind of religion. I just want the truth. So how can we expect our kids to believe the real stuff when we try to convince them about fake stuff that is made to be equally plausible? No wonder generations can be lost to the truth of the Bible. It takes faith to believe in God and His miracles. Therefore, we shouldn't undermine true faith by exalting a myth. But why did we invent the story and how did the myth find a place in our tradition? I just want to help folks sort out the facts from the fiction about Hanukkah. And I'll even send you my Hanukkah research free of charge if you're interested. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If you like, when I'm done, call your rabbi. Get verification about the things I'm telling you. If you doubt my research or the veracity of my claims, put them to the test. It's okay with me. Our modern festival of lights, it's loaded with myth-like errors. But you know what? I still think that Hanukkah might be a more appropriate festival for Christians to celebrate than Christmas. Does that sound a bit radical or perhaps sacrilegious? Just ask yourself this. Did the church celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah? It's easy to prove. Jesus was in the Hanukkah. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 22, clearly declares Jesus visited the temple to celebrate the Feast of Dedication. So why not? As I like to say, Jesus is Lord, and he was such a nice Jewish boy. You know, I think that modern Judaism and Western Christianity have both drifted from their original biblical practices. Perhaps both world religions should take a closer look at our unifying origins. Christianity was birthed as a Jewish sect with Jewish apostles who believed in the Jewish Messiah and worshipped the God of Israel in the land of Israel. During this holiday season, I hope you will identify the unbreakable link connecting our two faiths. Hanukkah is a perfect holiday to break through and overcome some of the confusion that exists between Jews and Christians. We both love the same God, and He would have us love one another. Both of our religions have some serious problems. Both faiths carry some pretty silly baggage. Can we demythologize a few things? Let me give you some examples. Do you realize that the New Testament church didn't have a New Testament? They read the Jewish Bible. They talked about a Jewish Savior in synagogue decades before they joined churches. Now, I love to remind folks that John the Baptist was not a Baptist. I want every Christian to understand that the earliest Christians were Jews. As such, it's helpful to reckon with your Jewish heritage. And Hanukkah holds a key. Our festival comes each year around Christmas. It's usually in November or December, and some years Christmas happens during Hanukkah. Now, why should these issues be relevant to a Christian audience? I think it's a cultural imperative that Christians become sensitive to the social pressures placed on many Jewish families during the Christmas season. You know, Hanukkah is sandwiched between many weeks of Christmas carols and twinkling lights in every yard from Thanksgiving to, to the New Year. And Jewish families cannot ignore the overwhelming influence that Christmas has on our society. The commercialism and advertising centered around this Christian celebration does impact Jewish families. Today, both Christmas and Hanukkah have drifted from their original intent. In part, it's because the church has forgotten its Jewish heritage, and that is a tragedy. Let me try to rectify some of the misunderstanding about Hanukkah. Permit me to summarize our festival in a way that everyone can remember. 
Hanukkah is like many Jewish celebrations. It goes like this. They hated us, they beat us up, God beat them up, we lit candles, and then we ate. Steven Spielberg or George Lucas might have explained it a little differently. If a Jewish Star Wars prequel were ever to be produced, it would begin like this. Jew Wars. A long time ago, in a culture far, far away, lived a warrior king named Alexander the Great. After his death, his massive world empire was divided into four kingdoms, ruled by four of his generals. Then a Jewish guy messed up all of their plans. His name was Maccabee. The villain of the Hanukkah story is the Syrian king, a real guy named Antiochus Epiphanes. In 167 BCE, he tried to force his Greek culture on the Jewish people in Israel. This was called Hellenization. But then Antiochus crossed the line. He commanded the Jews to leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. Some fearless Jewish women refused to obey the king, even though they knew it would lead to their death. Antiochus then performed heinous crimes at his orders. The Syrian army put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised, and they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Circumcision is the most ancient sign of God's covenant with the Jewish people. This command goes back to Abraham, where God told him the details of the covenant and instituted the sign of circumcision. God instructed that it be the enduring sign throughout every generation in perpetuity. The Syrian king was forcing the Jews to submit to a new God and a new law. Sadly, many compromising Jews succumbed to popular religion. They fell into idolatry and gross sin. Some Jews joined Hellenistic gymnasiums and were completely lost to pagan culture. The gymnasiums promoted open homosexuality. Some ancient Jewish men actually underwent cosmetic surgery to remove the appearance of circumcision. But God has always had a people who would stand for truth. Like martyrs of every age, these saints of God defied an earthly ruler to keep faith with their heavenly Lord. They honored God above King Antiochus. Hanukkah reminds us of their character of faith, the blessings of freedom, and the outstretched arm of God's deliverance. And this is the context from which our celebration arose. There's a sense in which Hanukkah is for each victim of the flesh who remains a true conqueror in the spirit. Do you realize that Millions of religious people are called upon in our time to stand for God at the cost of earthly suffering. This is not an exaggeration. I've personally worked with the underground church during the age of communist domination in the former Soviet Union. I assure you, religious persecution still exists. Modern Christians have been persecuted in China, India, Sri Lanka, Southeast Asia, North Africa, and in many Muslim Middle Eastern regions. Look at Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran. Even near our shore in Cuba, Christians still struggle today. Believe me, suffering for God is commonplace in many nations. You see, where God is not king, he's often not even welcome. So don't be surprised when suffering for our faith in Jesus comes to America in far worse ways than has been experienced thus far. Remember, it is natural for earthly rulers to fear God's reign. They don't want to share power or be restricted by the moral constraints of God's word. Someday the world will experience God's complete redemption. But until then, we must hold on to our faith and rejoice in the testimonies of the faithful. Hanukkah preserves just such a memory. And that's why I believe that Hanukkah should be a universal festival of freedom, especially for Christians who serve the God of Israel. The true accounts of Hanukkah 
are fascinating without adding miracle, mythical stories. So, why did such a strange tale like the alleged miracle of the olive oil come into our Jewish tradition? I think we can blame this one on nervous rabbis from the last period of the Talmudic age. Hanukkah commemorates Jewish independence and freedom because an event that took place nearly 200 years before Jesus purchased our freedom on the cross. But we can be certain that there is not one single mention of the eight-day oil miracle until several hundred years after Christ. Now, there is much fertile soil in the history of the true Hanukkah story. And one would think that the noble struggle of a successful Jewish revolt would have led to a noble culture. Unfortunately, life does not always play out like storybook romances. If you are familiar with Jewish history, you'll realize that after the rebellion was won, things got a bit ugly. The Jewish Hasmoneans came to power and things went south. By the end of the Hasmonean dynasty, their evil behavior became well known, and they deteriorated to the point that they actually opposed and persecuted the Jewish rabbis. Now remember, the Pharisees written about in our New Testament, they were the religious and political descendants of the Hasidim that lived even before the Hasmoneans. These Hasidim became leaders of what political analysts today might label as the ancient religious right. A noted struggle existed between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I guess we could liken them to, to religious conservatives and liberals. The Pharisees stood for legalism. The Sadducees wanted tolerance and compromise. The Jewish doctrinal battles described in the Gospels attest to these differences. Paul used the rift between those Jews who believed in the resurrection against those who did not. And there were significant different kinds of Jewish beliefs described in our New Testament. I, I like to tell people that in reality, there were many types of Judaisms that existed in and around the time of Jesus. In fact, I wrote a book specifically about the various sects of Judaisms that Jesus would have encountered. The book is titled, Judaism Through the Eyes of Jesus. My point is that when considering the Jews of the ancient world, there was not a one-size-fits-all flavor of Judaism. That was true in the time of Jesus, and my friend, it remains true today. For our purposes right now, I want everyone to be aware that the history of Hanukkah is real and well-documented but it is not the story typically told around the family table, unless you're at my family's Hanukkah table. The ancient extra-biblical written texts about the struggle of the famous Maccabees have a holy ring to them. In verse 54, we learn about the fateful fulfillment of a prophecy in the book of Daniel. There we read that the Syrians set up the abomination of desolation on the altar. Let me put it in a nutshell. Antiochus had swine slaughtered in the temple. The Syrians actually forced the Jews to sacrifice a pig on God's altar. Well, as you can well imagine, that was the setup for the Jewish version of the gunfight at the OK Corral. The scene exploded when the priest, Mattathias Maccabee, went over the holy edge. His righteous anger erupted, and he personally killed the Jewish transgressor who was sacrificing a pig. I mean, picture it. He drew a sword and slaughtered the man on the spot. Can you imagine the scene? The shrewd, self-confident, pompous Syrian leader had marched into the city of Moda'in, a small town near Jerusalem. Their takeover had been going quite well. They had no reason to think the Jews of Moda'in would be any more troublesome than the compliant Jews they had encountered along the way. They approached an old priest named Mattathias Maccabee. They offered him a sweet deal. The Syrians knew that the priest could make their job much easier. So they went to Mattathias and they promised meaningful political favors in exchange for cooperation. He would have gained a controlling foothold in the new regime. Uh, isn't that the way things work? 
You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Long before the words were written in the New Testament, Mattathias well understood the concept. What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his soul? Pigs were obviously unclean according to Mosaic mandates. Sacrificing a pig in any venue would have been abominable to a worshiper of the God of Israel. But sacrificing a pig on God's altar as a gift to the pagan god Zeus was completely unthinkable to a faithful Jewish priest. And that old priest was well acquainted with the dictates of Moses. He was probably familiar with Daniel's prophecy predicting the abomination of desolation. Maccabee simply refused to tolerate such evil. Now don't get confused. I, I'm not discussing opinions about prophecy or when the rapture will take place. This is not eschatological supposition or sensationalism. I'm not speaking about actions of the Antichrist during the tribulation. This is ancient history that was unfolded for all of us in an undeniable fulfillment of a very specific, much earlier biblical prophecy. It is directly out of the sacred Jewish writings that predate the New Testament. The abomination of desolation described in the Hanukkah account happened more than 2,000 years ago. I've been reading right out of my King James Bible. No doubt a few of you have been searching your concordance, trying to find the reference so you could take notes. Well, here's a flash. Save your time. It probably fell out of your Bible a long time ago. Here is the truth as I understand it. The Talmudic rabbis do teach us about Hanukkah. Unfortunately, the miracle of the oil is not mentioned until the last works of the era in their writings known as the Gemara. What is of great interest to remember is that the Talmud makes little mention of the military victory. The Maccabean Revolution is at the center of the festival, but it was not actively promoted by our ancient Talmudic rabbis. Serious students of religion and history must ask, why? Why would our rabbinic leaders leave out these important factual details to fabricate an otherwise unbelievable and unimportant story? The two best answers I can submit are politics and fear. History records that the later Maccabees got themselves into some moral troubles. The Hasmonean dynasty, as it was known, became Hellenized and very polluted. Judaism, with their newly won power, I mean, they didn't know what to do with all their success, I guess, and eventually they opposed the rabbis and persecuted them. After the Talmudic rabbis finally rose to power, they didn't want to shine the spotlight on their unfriendly predecessors. It was just not good politics. The other reason, in my view, was fear. I think the rabbis were afraid that if the Jewish rank and file were reminded of the glory years, they might get bold and demand independence all over again. I mean, God had gloriously delivered them from Syrian oppression under the Maccabees. But later efforts to find freedom did not end so well. Each rebellion that followed was violently put down. And by the time of the rabbis living in the 4th or 5th century of the Common Era, they just couldn't handle another failed bloody revolt. They were tired of wars and unrealized expectations, their collective memory of the death and destruction delivered by Rome during prior centuries was too fresh and painful to ignore. I believe they wanted to shift the emphasis from a festival exalting revolution and victory to a toothless, truthless holiday that was non-threatening and non-violent. Hence the creative invention of a safe miracle that just never happened. Now, I, I don't want my Christian friends to get cocky about this. Don't look down on us for inventing a distraction. I mean, have you done any less with your Easter bunny? You pass out sweets and send your children on a simple search for Easter eggs hidden on broad paths for all to find while the resurrected Son of God calls men to the sweetness of eternity on a difficult search along a narrow path that only a remnant will find. My hope is that this message will protect the remnant, reveal the futility of protecting ourselves with fiction. Truth 
is the only safe harbor for those who believe in the God of the Bible. Anything less than truth will be unsatisfying, and in the end, it will be revealed for what it is, error. Seek the truth. Don't rest in my words. I'm just a man, and I still have many questions of my own to resolve. I've sorted some of them out, but I'm still a student because I still find a lot to wrestle with along this difficult, though exciting journey. If you have questions, I'd be happy to try to help you sort out your own issues with God and religion. Maybe this holiday season would be a good time to confront your spiritual concerns. If you feel that way, let me know what you think. Call me for a free printed copy of this Hanukkah research or for details about how you can obtain this complete audio or video program. Free downloads are available online or by calling 1-800-688-3422. We'll make this stuff available. Till next time, shalom, God bless you, and Chag Sameach. Happy holidays.